Hi everyone. So today I'm going to introduce a new topic on experimental design and A-B testing. So first I'm going to go over some conceptual issues. So what is A-B testing? And then why is it important? And then I'm going to you know, show you how A-B testing works using, re using you know, uh, regression analysis. So pretty much, you know, uh, let's say you know, next time you visit you know, a web page, and pretty much you know, like you know, Amazon.com or Google.com, so companies like Google.com, Airbnb, or Apple, you know, are doing A-B testing, you know, regularly to improve user experience online. They also use A-B testing to design better products. So pretty much, you know, there are also other web apps available to help companies manage user experience online. So for example, we have optimized Lee, Hotjar, and Crazy X. So these companies actually use A-B testing to learn user behavior and then try to send, you know, let's say, you know, uh, uh, personalized coupons. They try to, you know, give you, you know, better promotional offers. So let's say probably, you know, you try to purchase, you know, uh, you know uh, a laptop and as in, you know, they want to see, you know, which kind of features you prefer to have. As in, they try to, you know, uh, make sure they actually match your, your, you know, your, uh, your, let's say, your requirements. So pretty much you see here, uh, we, uh, especially when we do A-B testing, we are going to actually, let's say, you know, uh, treat consumers uh, with, let's say, different manipulations. So a manipulation could be, let's say, you know, a, a, a a color a web page a manipulation could be you know let's say you know uh, a change of the product basket so let's say when you go when you go shopping online you see you know the, the icon you know the icon you use for product purchase you know next time when you click on the icon you know they may change some features so you know so you know when, they, when you click on the icon they take you to the you know the uh, you know the checkout page they want to make sure you have the best experience so let's say this time we are just going to analyze you know how advertising exposures work for you know for a company so we assume that you know when companies uh, send you advertising expo you know campaigns and you know you probably purchase more products okay but we want to see how you know how significant you know this you know advertising uh, exposure affect you know your product purchase okay so pretty much we are going to have control group uh, which we assume you know that they will not receive any campaign and we will have a treatment group which we assume that they will receive you know some campaign from the company and then we want to evaluate you know how this uh, how this you know uh, uh, manipulation could be used to you know predict product purchase, and so pretty much we build a regression model. We try to use you know let's say uh, a predictor, which is advertising exposure, to predict to predict you know product purchase. So pretty much we are going to have treatment group, which receives the manipulation. We are going to have control group receives no man no manipulation or no no campaign okay so first i'm going to show you how this works using excel so pretty much you see here we have the first variable and uh, we which is adwords campaign uh, ad copy we have van zero so for consumers in group one we give them the campaign for consumers in group zero they did not receive any campaign so pretty much you know here I'm going to show you how you know how how to do you know uh, how to do dummy coding in Excel, as in we will do regression analysis. So first step, I'm going to create you know this uh, uh, two values in the first row, and so my goal is to make sure I do dummy coding before I do regression analysis. Otherwise, if you do not, if you skip dummy coding. Yeah, uh, so the result you will get, you get will not be you know accurate. Okay, so so let's say here when we do dummy coding, 
Uh, so uh, again, so you see here, we actually use, you know, let's say if then function. Uh, we are going to compare, you know, the value. Uh, we are going to compare the value, you know, here in B3. So we are going to call the B3 with the value here in D1, okay, in D1. So make sure you use the dollar sign. And then if, it, if, if these two values are the same, we give us the value of one. If these two values are different, we give a value of zero, okay? And then we drag down this equation to the end of the data set. And you see here we created this, the control group. And then next, uh, we drag the equation to the next row, but make sure to double check. So you see here, if B3 equals to E1, E1, you see E1. So we want to make sure E1 is fixed. So that being said, the dollar sign is actually, you know, between the alphabet and numerical value. And so here, if it's equal, we give a value of one. So that being said, you know, this uh, observation is actually in the treatment group. Okay. So next, you see here, we already created dummy variable. And so now we move to the next step. We do regression analysis. So make sure you have the data analysis package available. Okay. If not, do Google search and install this data analysis package. So now we do regression analysis. So I'm going to start from scratch to make sure you can follow. Okay. So our, our predictor is actually AdWords campaign. So this time, make sure you know that, you know, we want to make sure we select only the treatment group of uh, treatment groups. So here we only have one treatment group. So we want to make sure we have correct X. So now we want to make sure we have the deep in the variable, which is product purchase. Okay, product purchase. Okay, so now we have the treatment group and also the predictor. So the reason we only include the treatment group is that because, you know, uh, we actually assume that a constant is a control group. So we assume that, you know, for those consumers who are in the control group, they will still purchase some products, okay? But we want to see, you know, if AdWords campaign, we actually, you know, improve, let's say, product purchase significantly, okay? So my, my battery is, is getting pretty hot, so I need to make sure the fan is on, so make sure, you know, it, the laptop functions correctly. So now I'm going to do regression analysis. Make sure you uncheck, you know, let's say constant is zero. Because if, you know, because if, you know, if we actually check, you know, constant is zero, we assume, you know, beta zero is equals to zero. And then, you know, that means, you know, we know that expected value of y given x equals to zero is actually zero. So that being said, you know, we don't know. We, we know that, you know, this control group is actually now, you know, theoretically the, you know, the reference group which received, you know, no treatment or no manipulation. So you want to make sure we have, you know, uh, this, we uncheck constant is zero. Otherwise, our result will be inaccurate. So now I'm going to do regress analysis. Now I'm going to do regress analysis. So now you see we have the intercept, so which is also named a constant, as we have, you know, the coefficient for the constant, we have the coefficient for the treatment group. So here, this coefficient for the constant is actually, you know, the coefficient So is actually coefficient for, you know, 
for the control group. So that being said, equal, it equals to G, the highlighted cells, so G21, okay? G21, okay? So we want to make sure we can find, you know, this, uh, this, you know, this coefficient for the control group. And then here we have the, you know, we have the additional explanation for the treatment group. So pretty much if you, if you scroll down to this tutorial, you can find, you know, the p-value, you know, the, the p-value here for the, the p-value for, you know, for the, for the treatment group is at 0.0, 0 0.00018. 0 As in, which is less than 0 0.05, so we actually reject no hypothesis. The no hypothesis suggests, you know, there's no relationship between, you know, the predictor and a different variable. So since, you know, it's significant, the p-value is significant, we suggest that, you know, we, we find, you know, let's say, uh, a significant relationship between X and Y. And that, as in, you know, you see here, the coefficient for the treatment group is actually 41.57. As in which says, you know, that, you know, the first campaign is more effective. Okay, the first campaign is more effective. Okay, so, so now we will do the, you know, we will, we will, we will interpret the result. So we suggest that, you know, now the estimate for beta zero and beta one, and then we suggest that, you know, uh, for, for, you know, for, uh, for, uh, for, for this uh, coefficient value 95.43, we suggest that, you know, the treatment group would receive the campaign will actually purchase a product, you know, as in they will spend, you know, the spend $137, as in on average. Uh, but for the control group, they will only spend, let's say, 40, you know, they will only spend, let's say, you know, let's say this uh, coefficient for the constant, which is $95, okay? So for the control group, they will only spend $95. Or for the you know, treatment group, the increase is actually 41.57. Altogether, the treatment group will spend $137 for product purchase, okay? So that being said, our product, you know, uh, our advertising campaign is very effective, okay? So now, you know, I, I'm, I'm also going to show you how to do it using R, uh, R Markdown. I think I can send you the documents if you want to, you know, do your own R Markdown documents and publish uh, at rpubs.com. So now, you know, uh, I'm going to let you guys work on the second step. So pretty much, you know, you can follow me, you can follow my tutorial and you know, start building, you know, the uh, dummy variable and then do regression analysis. So here I already created the dummy variable for you guys. And then I'm going to let you guys do, you know, regression analysis yourself using Excel. And then, you know, hopefully we also answer these questions at least at the end of the tutorial. Okay. So I think, uh, I think that's it for this, uh, you know, that's it for this tutorial. Again, I, I try to, you know, I try to list these uh, additional resources available at the end of the tutorial to make sure you can actually read, you know, some, let's say, uh, some tutorials written by other statisticians or data analysts. So let's say how to do A-B testing with, you know, with Google Analytics, how to do A-B testing, how to design A-B test, and how booking.com, actually does A-B testing in the, you know, uh, in a daily basis, okay? So I think uh, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy, you know, this tutorial. 
And then, you know, you will also try to understand why our program is more flexible and user-friendly, you know, than, you know, let's say Excel. Um, so that's it for today. So uh, make sure you practice as in, you know, uh, do this exercise using, you know, Excel, as in hopefully also R and R Studio, okay? Uh, let me know if any question. Otherwise, good luck. Yeah, I appreciate your time. Uh, have a great day.